waiting, I switched over to my no. camera. <laughs> Something is missing. I just hope I just hope it doesn't sink. <laughs> and we there's like how many of us? Two plus nine, eleven of us all together. So we're gonna have the whole or actually a little bit more. Plus four more. Nine plus eleven plus four. Okay, this is our seating arrangement. Um, plenty space, plenty space. Yeah. We chose the back. You know the people on the sidewalk? They will wave back at you. Most of the time with five figures. <laughs> Take advantage of this. You're never going to see the people on the sidewalk again, so have some fun with it, okay? All right, first thing we're going to talk about is the Seattle Center. Then we're going down the waterfront into the old part of town, back up to the newer part of downtown. Then we're going to go do what you wanted to do in the first place. See if this thing's going to float one more time. Because <laughs> we're going down the water, let's get the boring safety talk out of the way. It does it! <laughs> But it's an interactive rock and roll, pop culture, science fiction museum. Our boss, last year, received 2,408 phone calls from the residents asking us to please be quiet as we go by their units. Yeah, we almost set a record. Yeah. So with that in mind. <clears throat> Feel free to yell and scream as loud as you want, as long as you don't have a microphone. <laughs> Sushi bar in Seattle. Okay, I've lived here my entire life. It's right there at the Seattle Aquarium. Really? If you go in there for a snack, they'll let us see you eat in their exhibit. They're not gonna like it. They'll yell at you. If you do go in there, there's actually a very good exhibit in there. It's pretty cool. It's called Windows on Washington Waters. It's a hundred and twenty thousand gallon tank. Everything in the tank is native to Puget Sound including the largest octopus on the planet. There are two of them in there. They're about 85, 90 pounds apiece. Three times a day a diver gets into the tank to feed the fish. He's got a headset on underneath his helmet. You can talk to the guy while he's underwater. You got an intercom, but it's pretty cool. On your right is the great wheel. It sits at the end of Miner's Landing. Coming up on our right hand 
besides the hardest working man in Seattle. He's the hammering man. He's 48 feet tall, weighs 26,000 pounds. His arm moves four times a minute. He works 364 days a year. Take a guess which day he does not work. Here. Labor Day. <laughs> He's out in front of the century. They do not allow corporate stores in there at all, except for one, make a guess. Touching the original ones in the market. Oh. So that means if you go in there and you buy something, you're buying it from the person who made it, grew it, or caught it. Hey guys, if you get in trouble with the ladies, bouquets of flowers start at $5. <laughs> all right. Remember down, uh, down on the waterfront I told you about one uh, the, huh? those miners that went to Alaska and how none of them came, or very few came back with even enough money to last their own life? One of those guys was 17 years old. He didn't want to be a logger, so he packed up his stuff, went to Alaska. He was gone for a little over three years. When he got back in the early 1900s, he had $13,000 worth of gold in his pocket. The value of that gold today would be in the half a million dollar rate. He did what any single 20 year old would do with half a million bucks. He opened a women's shoe store. That guy's name is John Nordstrom. Has anybody ever heard of the. I can tell you about Belltown. There are more dogs living as pets than there are school-aged children in Belltown. Main reason for that, there are no schools in the downtown core area. If you got a child, you got to get them to school. You got to get in your car, you got to go to either Queen Anne, Capitol, or Beacon Hill. That's where the nearest schools are. And with the traffic here in Seattle, morning and afternoon, it's about an hour trip each way, each time. Yeah. This uh, area of town was named after a gentleman by the name of William Bell. William Bell said, you know what, if you're going to name part of the city after me, I get to name four of the streets after my four daughters. He said, he said, okay, fine, no problem. Four blocks to our right is Virginia. That's daughter number four. Two blocks this way from Virginia is Lenora. That was daughter number three. <clears throat> His oldest two daughters were First and Second Avenue. <laughs> you didn't see that one coming at all, did you? <laughs> size life jackets on board today. We have adults on this side and we have children on that side. 90 pounds and under makes you a child today. Adults in denial, please put these on. Uh, I gotta find my remote. All right. Hey, Jack, we're gonna back up. We don't have enough roads to get up to 88. Roads? But we're going, we don't need. I'm going to give you people some great advice right now. Don't do this with your own vehicle. <laughs> Get a rental car and have some fun. <laughs> All right, you ready to go in the water? <laughs> Cross your fingers. You did put the plug in this time, didn't you? I think so. Okay.
got a man's face on it. Oh, yeah, there's a good reason for that. It's actually a funny story. The Fremont Art Council was having trouble finding a sculptor who would do this piece of artwork. After about six, eight months of waiting, trying to find somebody to do it, one of the guys on the council says, you know what, I'm a, I'm a sculptor myself. I'll do it. Well, his rival on the on board said, you can't hire yourself. That's not ethical. I forbid it. He went ahead and did it anyway to get back the guy and put his face on that dog. There's a moral to this story. If you're going to get an artist mad at you, wait till he's done with a piece of artwork. Yeah. The tech companies that are down here on your left, you have a, the big one is Adobe. The big one, on, this is the busiest drawbridge in the United States. That bridge will open and close an average of 30 times a day. Now, if you know the words to it, feel free to sing along. Cell Research Institute. In my opinion, what goes on there is a pretty cool thing. Anybody who does research on the brain bucket can go in there and do it, and Alan, once he approves it, he will personally finance the research out of his own bucket. If you discover something in your research that benefits mankind, it goes out to the world free of charge. You get the credit for the discovery, you just don't get paid the residuals. Yeah. He paid, he paid you to discover it. Yeah. This is very important to Alan. Uh, him and a few of his billionaire buddies have, I believe, four different buildings around the country, each one packed. Where 
Again. You want to know what you look like right now on a duck? <laughs> 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 <laughs>